Next up, we have Rob Chauhan. Go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Jess. And thanks to the Wikimedia Foundation and OpenStreetMap for uh, hosting this Mapping USA co-conference. Uh, I'm Rob Chauhan. I'm dialing in from San Diego today. And I'm talking about uh, making maps for nonprofits using OpenStreetMap data. So I have a link here that I think Jess is going to post out, but I'll post out as well. And it's filled with demos. I'm going to go through some of the demos and some of the, through some of the key points. So this nonprofit we're talking about is based out in Lebanon, Oregon. And they have, they're a nonprofit that's really good at getting grants and money to build trails, but they need help with map maps for their, to help uh, get more attention. So we worked with them to, we approached them and said, hey, do you guys need help with the maps? And they said, yes. But what we want is two kiosk maps. So over about a period of three, five months last summer, I helped build them a big three foot by five foot kiosk map. I have an example of it here. This is a 20 inch by 30 inch poster. But um, if you're ever in Lebanon, Oregon, you can go to the kiosk that they have there. It has historical photos and as well see the map that's there. So when we built this map, we thought, oh, that's great. What a, we're so lucky to work with these people. They were so appreciative to have the, the, the donated work. Um, but the problem was the only way that people would see the map is if they physically went there. So yes, we can help you, with, but only for those two trails. And there's this whole other system out there called the internet that helps with distribution of, of map data that uh, we would like to tap into. So I'll talk about that a little bit as well. What, I want to start with a couple of photos. This first photo is one of the kiosks. There's the map here and then some historical photos. Then I wanted to tell you, show you in, on the website this legend. And this is, this is a, a web representation of what's at, at the trailhead. And you can see there that we called out OpenStreetMap contributors as we should. So we have a couple, we have uh, streets in black, very basic, proposed trails, and, and in yellow trails as existing. And then we have some symbology. And I wanted to call out the symbology we use was open source from the National Park Service. So instead of making our own trailhead icons and iconography, we just wanted to use what already had been figured out. Uh, okay, so you, as you see behind me, here's a poster of the map. And then if you just only look on the website, there it is there. So what we're talking about is, is this section here is over on the left, we start with an OSM extract. And I'll walk you through all the types of products that I was able to make uh, with this OSM extract and a bunch of technology in the in between. And this, this phrase I'm let's start with here is I can deliver I can deliver and I did deliver, our team delivered the same map in the tra at the trailhead, in print, in web, and mobile, the exact same data. So I would just kind of fly by some of the products. We have a three foot by five foot kiosk map, as I mentioned, a 20 foot, 20 inch by 30 inch poster. So we have maps for social media to help the nonprofit talk about the maps as they have events coming up. Uh, I have a couple mobile apps I can show you. One for a mobile app I built for, for Apple and one that's for Avenza. Then we talk about the web components. Leaflet's a big part of the story. And then this, this technology called COG or Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF. So, but let's go back to the diagram. How did we go from OSM extract to all of these? Well. We use other free and open source software for geospatial or FOSS4G, and we use QGIS and the QGIS print layout. So the biggest part of the work was getting the OSM extract and putting it into QGIS. Um, once we get it into QGIS using the print layout, we were able to generate something called a, a geotiff, and it's, it's raster-based. So kind of vector-free uh, printing here, just rasters only. Once we had that geotiff, then that's where it kind of could split out. Once you have a GeoTIFF, you can put it on the cloud easily with cloud optimized GeoTIFF. You can cut it up for leaflet. You can put it on a Venza for an offline map. You could um, make a social media app for Apple, for iMessage. We could produce maps that people could share out for themselves. And of course, as I mentioned, the printing. So did it start with the OSM extract? Yes. 
But was there other parts of the stack? Yes. And they're all free and open source software that I use for this entire stack. So just continuing with the website, I just kind of want to introduce you to, there's links here. So if you want more information on, you just hit the blue, of course. And in t this is what we did in 2020. Our 2020 initiative was to get that kiosk map. It was part of a ribbon cutting ceremony for the, for the nonprofit that worked really well. We also found that if, if we just take the same map and instead of printing it at three foot by five foot, there's a national retailer that has 5,000 stores nationwide in the US that would do printing. So we had distributed printing built in. I had this, this GeoTIFF that I mentioned, it was 250 megabytes. I uploaded it to the national retailer and somebody in Oregon could, could pick it up. And I, I did that several times. And then they used that for fundraisers. Every time a sponsor gave them $1,000, they got a poster like this. Okay, on the social media, and I'll show you that down below, we use the QGIS Atlas tool. So again, using QGIS. And then a couple of demos, you can look for yourself, but I'll try them here. This is the leaflet demo. And if you, certain links with leaflet, I could take you exactly where you wanted to go on the trail system. So once again, there's leaflet. But leaflet takes a little bit of processing up front. And this, this new other technology that we looked at, it's called COG, which I mentioned before. But instead of distributing this large file to the nonprofit and say, hey, nonprofit, here's a quarter gigabyte of data. Go to town, figure it out. They wouldn't know what to do with it. They don't know if they have a TIFF viewer. So COG comes to the rescue. And as I said, I'll show you that demo down below. And then uh, offline maps for mobile is something that I've been studying for a couple of years. So I have some solutions there. Here's some details about the map. Um, a lot of resolution, a lot of pixels. That's why it became so large. I'm going to go down to the OSM extract because I think this is kind of interesting. Let me just get this set up properly. So you, what I'm going to show you is the map with several different layers. And I've detailed the layers here, and I'll just talk through those. So here's the base map, what I, just some imagery data. And now you can click through this and add in all the OSM data. This is all the OSM data for this city in Oregon, Lebanon, Oregon. I, the red is all the stuff that the nonprofit didn't want to show. The black is what they wanted to show. So using uh, QGIS expressions, I had to filter all this data out. For example, remove East, East Eddy Street, remove Post Street. And I'll show you what that looks like in the next slide. And there it is. So that's with QGIS filtering, I was able to remove all of that. There it is with all the data. And here it is filtering QGIS, all the OSM extract data. And then one more click through. And this is what the final app final uh, map looks like. So adding in uh, la um, layers of trails from the nonprofit and some labels that they thought was important. They want to tell people to get to River Park. You need to know that you take a left at Ralston Park, which is close to downtown, something like that. So these are requirements that they came up with. So I'm going to burn through this real quick. There's a base map. There's all the OSM data from the extract that pulled directly into QGIS beautifully. There's the QGIS filtering. And then there's the final map. Okay, and then I'm gonna, and I kind of detail that here with some of the um, filterings that I did there, there to remove some, the OSM data. I kept talking about the other demos. And please hit this website, roblabs.com slash BLT. BLT stands for Build Lebanon Trails. And I'll just leave it here as I go through my last minute. So the first section here is called Maps for Social Media. So. What I thought of in QGIS is if I could cut up square images of their maps as they could use this for their Instagram page, their Facebook page, their Twitter page. It's already square. It's already made for social media like that. And these are just small representations, but they were around 1K by 1K pixel images. And here's all the key places. If you wanted to have a hike over here at Riverview Park or Mark Slough Trail, the data was ready to go. All they had to do is put it on their social media. So I built a map for social media as well. And then the last thing I have in my last 20 seconds here is the COG Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF. This is a 250 megabyte GeoTIFF that 
as I move around, it's pulling in the data that it needs. And that's the cloud op optimized GeoTIFF. So thanks again. I'm going to leave it here as I uh, bounce off. I appreciate your time today. Thanks very much.